Hi, it's Carly with Launch Code. So in this last video on our introduction to models, we're going to be going over model binding and adding it to the coding events application. So if you um, recall, when we first introduced model classes, we talked about how um, you know adding your application data to to a model class helps make your application more flexible. You can, right now our event, uh, our event definition is relatively simple. Um, you know, really when we, when a user creates the event, really all we're asking for the user are two, um, two small pieces of information, a name and a description, but we could easily expand the event definition, the class definition to include more information about an event. Um, we could, we, and putting that information within the model itself, um, you know, re requires relatively little changes throughout the rest of the application. What model binding allows us to do is to kind of take that idea of flexibility or that, um, you know, work towards flexibility um, one step further. So here in events controller, when we, when we actually process creating a new event from the form, we have to physically take the, the form fields that the user has um, that the user has submitted. What, what model binding will allow us to do is to just pass in the event object itself. Um, so really it's, it's making the, the controller and the view aware of the, the model class that we've created. So let's remove name and description parameters and just pass in an event object. We'll call it new event. And what we're adding to the event collection is just new event. So the application itself is doing the work of, you know, the, the framework is doing the work of creating the new event. We're not calling that constructor explicitly here. Um, but speaking of constructor, we do need to make a little bit of an update to the model class itself. So in order to have model binding work, we uh, we should have a no arg constructor within our application. So right now the only constructor that we have you see is this is this um, is this constructor that takes the name and the description, sets those fields as well as the ID and, and increments to an next ID. What we want to do is we want to add a constructor that takes no arguments. Um, but remember, every time we create a new event, we also want to set the ID property to make sure that every event has a unique ID. So we'll, um, we'll add that logic within the no arg constructor. And in order to take advantage of the ID generation um, without calling it or without writing it explicitly also within this original constructor, we can also use or we can use um, what we've introduced before called constructor chaining. So when this constructor that takes these two arguments is called, it's also um, it's also invoking this no arg constructor. Let me save this guy and make sure I save my event controllers too. So one more thing to take a look at um, within the model class are the, the properties that are being assigned by the user in the view form. So in order for model binding to work, another requirement in addition to this no arg constructor, another requirement is that the form fields that are being submitted, their names need to match exactly the um, what fields they're mapping to within the, the class definition. So here in event, we have a name property and a description property. Let's take a look at what we have in views. In views, we have a form field with the name name, and we have a form field with this shorthand for description. So we need to update this one in order to precisely match what property it's mapping to on the object. So we'll change this to say description. I think I got in trouble for misspelling that once before. But I think that's right. So that's all that we need to do to implement this model binding. So let's run this application. Now um, we won't expect that we'll see any changes. Um, in the running application, but we'll know that it's working if the application works, if we're able to um, create these new events. So no events yet, let's add one.
Okay. No problem. Let's see if our event, if our ID generation is working. What did we say before? Grace Hopper. Okay, great. So um, we're still able to make our, our event objects just the same, but now with model binding implemented in this one spot, we've, um, we've increased the flexibility of our application and we've also helped um, take another step towards model validation, which we'll talk about in the next section.